Hello, my name is Daniel Finnelson, and welcome to part 3 of the Ontario Tech INFR 3110U Games Engines Design and Implementation Midterm uh, Presentation for Fall 2020. And uh, in this video, I will discuss the, uh, ran the random generation algorithm uh, that I made for our uh, maze. So, here I have a visual aid. Uh, so, the first step was uh, we will start off with this green dot, and that is our start room. Uh, and uh, our, our rooms are defined as, have, as being attached to four other rooms, north, south, east, and west. Uh, every time that we create a room, we are looking for an empty. We, uh, we, we are looking for an empty room for, of our current room. And we are creating a new room uh, in that pointer. And every time that we create a room, say to the north, uh, we will also be linking that northern room to our current room uh, as the northern room's south room. <laughs> uh, which essentially, like, if we have... Uh, we should always have a link like this, and so as we go on, our map would look something like this. Right? So, uh, the first step in the algorithm, starting from our start room, create a series of rooms uh, based off of a minimum path. And once we have, so currently the minimum path is 20. Um, it used to be 30. Made some really big maps. Decided that let's not do that. Um, so after it has created uh, a single randomized path, uh, we then plop our end room. We begin like this uh, simply to ensure that we will always have a path from the beginning to the end. And along, uh, along the way, we put four checkpoints. Um, so the player will always encounter at least four checkpoints before they reach uh, the end room. After we've generated that, uh, we then go on to the bloat phase, where uh, each room upon generation will have a, uh, a number of desired paths, which uh, are for the most part uh, two, which means that each room should be linked to two other rooms, though certain rooms, uh, such as the start and end room, uh, have one path, and uh, some rooms upon generation uh, will spawn with either three or four different paths. So starting from our start point, uh, uh, I use a recursive algorithm to step through the uh, entirety of our path, room by room, and if uh, if the it, the room uh, wants to have more paths, we simply generate as much paths uh, to a certain extent. So. As it is, uh, it currently goes half what the current uh, minimum path would be uh, recursively. So if I were to uh, begin a path, say, uh, about halfway, uh, I may only generate one more room. Whereas if I branch off uh, at the very beginning, I'll end up with these long, complicated branches that will eventually turn into one or two rooms. Now, uh, this was done, I chose to use half 
simply uh, because it prevented the maze from getting too big, but a problem that we had was that we'd have these, the end uh, room would, would end up in, down these long hallways. So to combat that, starting from the ending, we have a reverse uh, recursive generation. It's the same uh, function that we use, uh, but we just start it closer to the end. And that will create more paths to flesh out our, uh, our maze even more. Once we have uh, created the topography of our maze, the next step is to fill it with the various hazards. So that's your moving walls, your pits, um, uh, new checkpoints, and these are uh, are placed by uh, for, by we get the the uh, the minimum and maximum dimensions. And in a sense, create a grid where each uh, tile on the grid is a different room. Then we just simply uh, get a random X and a random Y, check on our grid our, or uh, our map if that is a null room uh, or if it is an already defined room. Uh, if it is already defined or null, we just keep generating uh, new uh, coordinates. Uh, and uh, then we will place some, say, some more checkpoints, uh, maybe a few hazards here and there. Um, the amount of hazards are predetermined. Uh, so they are randomly generated uh, based off of the available tiles and uh, you will get a mostly full map but uh, not every tile is going to be uh, filled with hazards um, and so once we have filled the map with hazards uh, note that these rooms are abstract. They are uh, simply classes which are pointing to other instances of the class, and they have a tile type, uh, which is an enum, but the actual tile itself is not constructed. Um, so uh, next comes the build phase, where uh, again, using a recursive algorithm, starting from our start point, uh, we will build the actual 3D maze. Uh, and every time that we build a room, we will label that room as being built, so that as we spread out down the different branches, uh, we will never turn back uh, we will always be moving forward. And since we don't have any isolated paths or anything like that, we are guaranteed to reach uh, the different extremities of our